a fan-made Naruto mod has just made it into one of the biggest fighting game tournaments in the world. I think we need to talk about this, how we got here, how it happened, and how hungry people are for a new Naruto fighting game, because it's crazy how big the demand clearly is, and here we are, getting more Shinobi Striker DLC, and we've got Naruto Storm 5 rumors that seem very credible. And this is not a bash on those games, I mean, I praised them for different reasons in the past, and I'll enjoy them in the future as well, but perhaps the biggest bummer about these games getting supported or sequels is that the chances of a new Naruto Naruto fighting game are getting lower and lower. And we've wanted a Naruto fighting game for a long time, especially with Arc System Works and Dragon Ball Fighters. Naruto fans have been hungry for that same treatment. And the closest we ever got, in my opinion, was the Clash of Ninja series. The underdog that always lived under the shadow of the Ultimate Ninja series, I look back and I see in many ways a game that was ahead of its time. With how saturated people are of anime arena fighters nowadays, I think if both Storm and Clash of Ninja came out in 2023, I actually think Clash of Ninja would have been the most popular one. But Bandai played their cards very well back in the day, and while Clash enjoyed some moderate popularity, there is no denying that Ultimate Ninja won that contest. And might have been the reason why the Clash of Ninja series was ultimately discontinued with Takaratomi dropping the Naruto license. But this weekend, we saw Clash of Ninja pop up during Combo Breaker. This massive fighting game event usually has their fair share of official tournaments, and they have this space for community tournaments as well, where you'll see a lot of smaller scenes, often with really hyped tournaments. For instance, I really loved Windjammers 2 this year. That was a really fun watch. Hold it. Oh no! Oh my goodness! One of those community tournaments this year was Super Naruto Clash of Ninja 4. Now, Clash of Ninja 4 has been on Combo Breaker before. This isn't necessarily a new appearance. What's new is that this is the fan modded version of Clash of Ninja 4. I've made several videos on this mod. I dabbled in it competitively for a while. What the mod did was essentially rebalance the roster for this 17 year old game. It gave everyone new moves and added some new features as well as some fan service with skins and stages as well. And for the first time in Combo Breaker, we didn't see See the original Takaratomi game from 2015, we saw a fan modded Naruto game. The tournament had a total of 34 entrants, of which 30 of them showed up and played, and that seems like a small tournament, but if you take into account how old this game is, and the fact that everyone had to make the trip to play this locally, that is a pretty respectable number. And thanks to Macharino donations, the prize pool came to a grand total of over $1,000. Now, it may not sound like a lot, but it's a lot closer than you think to the big game prize pools. Dragon Ball Fighters only had double that with $2,240. Street Fighter V was at $4,360. And of course, there were the big games Tekken and Guilty Gear Strive with over $10,000 for prize pools. And this is all according to Liquipedia, by the way. But the Super Naruto prize pool was actually pretty close to something like Killer Instinct, which had $1,150. The prize pool was bigger than Soul Calibur's prize pool. How insane is that? It's there. It's competing in the same space as far as dollars go. Now, the spotlight was obviously much smaller. There are a lot of tournaments happening during Combo Breaker. It's hard to grab that spotlight. Now, most of this tournament was played off stream, but the top four was streamed by NetBattles, who streamed a lot of the community tournaments during Combo Breaker. Very fun stream for whenever Dragon Ball Fighters had a Lab Code 21 mirror happening. I swear, I've never been so bored watching a fighters tournament in my life. Nothing against the players. You pick the character that wins, that's how you play competitively, it was just not as exciting to watch as other years. And so, the top four stream began at winner's finals, and we had one of the community's favorites, Candle, who happens to be one of my favorite players because, well, he plays the characters that I used to main, and he was up against someone that no one was expecting, Abak, who is an OG Clash of Ninja player, but not really super active on the fan modded version. And he was playing Kiba, a character that you don't see very often in competitive. Abak took the first game, so Candle switched to Haku. Now, Haku is a very very hated character, or at least he was, because back in 2019, this was the Combo Breaker Finals. Now, he could teleport out of this here, but Fess is pretty good about reading those, and we're gonna see if that just goes all the way. What? Can't finish it out, but gets uh. the chip damage anyway. But here comes the fan mod, patching the character, the needles are still good, but they're not super broken anymore, so Haku doesn't work out, and Abok is too good at covering substitutions. Oh my god! <laughs> Every time Kendall is escaping combos, Akamaru is ready to catch him. Kendall switches over to Kisame, finally takes a game, but Abok is too solid, so he moves on to Grand Finals, and Kendall goes to Losers, where he's gonna play the winner of Limo versus Riki Ant. And I hate Kankuro so much. If you watched any of Combo Breaker, you probably caught some Guilty Gear Strive. You know when you're watching a hype match, the set is over, that was so great, let's move on to the next one. Oh, it's Happy Chaos. Great, another one. 
Let's watch this player get a frame perfect counter to get past the happy chaos zoning, so his reward is simply losing in the next round. Well, Ricky pulls this off. Oh, the guard break! The guard break! Oh, he. Whoa! This is TOD area. Wait. Okay, that's yes, dead. Sir. What I told you, Ricky instantly will pick it back up and put you in place. That was so sick. He found the opening for the guard break, found the opening for the TOD, and his reward is losing the next round. Ricky ties the set, he's playing out of his mind, Limo thinks about Gara for a second, but Kankuro is just too strong. If he switched to Gara, then this would not have happened. Oh, like nice! Super. Amazing time from Ricky. This is amazing from both of these players. Oh, wait, hit crow! Oh, hit cr well, GG. Limo wins and moves on to Losers Finals. In Losers Finals, Candle starts with Kisame, and did I tell you how much I hate Kankuro? Oh, and this is... Okay, look, he got him. Oh, oh no, messes up his BBX. No, he didn't mess it up. The puppet pushed Kisame back when he fell to the ground. Because this game is fucking gar- Kendall switches to Zabuza, it didn't work out. He ended up losing the set 3 to 1, and I fucking hate Kankuro so much. Thank god Limo switched characters for Grand Finals. I don't think I could have taken a potential 10 games of Kankuro next. Now, Abok is the player that put Limo in loser, so this was the hypest runback. He switched to Temari, and it was immediately obvious why. Every time Kiba lifted Temari up into the air during a block string, Limo was punishing. Every time Kiba was using his roll move, he couldn't be safe because Temari could chase him. On top of that, Limo was reading subs perfectly. Abok adapted quickly, he even won the first game, but Limo reset the bracket 3 to 1. And then, it just kept going. It felt like Abok was playing Kibo with a limited moveset, since Limo could punish a lot of his options. And he didn't have a good pocket to counter Temari. On top of that, Limo was a god at reading substitutions. Oh my gosh, that callout was a nasty. And so Limo took the whole thing, winning the first ever Super Naruto tournament at Combo Breaker. Hopefully the first of many. Because this mod really deserves all the praise in the world, and if we ever get a remake of Clash for the modern consoles, you bet you have these guys to thank for. Not holding my breath, I mean this wasn't a Bandai game, it's not very likely that they'll remake a game that wasn't theirs to begin with, and Takaratomi can't do it because they don't have the Naruto license, so it's very unlikely. But it's yet another good sign of how well a Naruto fighting game would do if they decided to make one nowadays. And I'd love to see more anime games at Combo Breaker. They really hold a wide range of community events, it's not just traditional fighting games. I think if the community puts their mind to it, we could see a Demon Slayer, we could see a Naruto Storm in one of these community tournaments. Maybe starting with Combo Breaker is a bit ambitious, but if these guys made it, I bet other communities could do it too. Sometimes I wish I lived in America so I can champion these projects and make it happen, but that's up to you guys. Some games really deserve to be on this stage, and I'd love to watch some offline tournaments of these because they usually have pretty bad netcode, so offline would just be a completely different beast. But that's it. That's a story I thought was worth telling, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did, make sure to leave me a like and subscribe for more anime games. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name's Globku, and I'll see you next time. Bye!